Hi there, I'm Jeff Thaler with Lettuce Tree Farms and today we're going to be talking about microgreens farming. Microgreens are young, healthy, fresh greens and herbs that you can grow anywhere. With some light, a small amount of soil and the right process, you can grow most any microgreens at home. Providing superior flavor and better nutritional value than adult or even baby greens, microgreens can be added to salads and sandwiches, as well as being a gorgeous garnish for any and every dish. Microgreens got started about 20 to 30 years ago in Southern California, quickly expanded over into Europe, and are now grown all over the United States as well as many other places in the world. One other thing to make sure you remember is that microgreens are not sprouts. Sprouts are actually the whole seed, the root, as well as the first little shoot that comes out of it, and you eat all of that together. Now, sprouts are grown in water and have a high risk of salmonella and E. coli, which is why there is a lot higher regulation for any sprout grower. Microgreens, on the other hand, are grown in soil and have a diverse ecosystem that, just like nature, protects them, especially when we do this in our Rust Belt Riders and tilt compost-based soil that's all made from local food scraps. Microgreens got started off with only a few varieties such as peas, uh, cabbage, broccoli, and basil, uh, and now have expanded into a lot of different things. One of our favorites that we find here is this colorful shiso perilla. So microgreens farming consists of a few main steps. First you gotta get the soil packed down and watered, you gotta get the seeds sown, and you gotta let them germinate in high humidity for a while. After that point you can pull them out and get them into some sunlight where they can finally develop over about seven to ten days and finally be ready for harvest and packaging right at the end. This shows a few different stages of our Shiso Perilla throughout its development. It's one of our slowest growers and can actually take up to ten days before it comes out of the germination shell and over six weeks before we actually have a final cut before we remove the flat completely because we can actually cut and get more harvest out of the same shiso flat, which is a bit of a rare case for most microgreens. So here at Lettuce Tree Farms, our main gig right now is microgreens farming, and we're gonna walk you through the way that we do our microgreens farming process. To start, we're gonna show you that we get our, uh, we're gonna go through sunflower seeds, basically. So these are our sunflower seeds. We weigh them all out on our scale, same as we use for harvesting, and we get it all sanitized and wiped down in between. The sanitizer we use is actually a hydrogen peroxide mix we make ourselves. We dilute 35% hydrogen peroxide down to around 10 to 12 to 15% um, with water. And that is what we use to disinfect surfaces as well as the growing equipment. What we do is we actually soak any seeds that have to be soaked in a hydrogen peroxide dilution that we uh, dilute even farther down to around 1 to 100. So that's well within organic standards and um, basically allows us to kill off anything that could be on the surface of the seeds, such as molds or bacteria that might inhibit the initial growth. So sunflowers are a fun one. They like to float. So after you add them into your jar of water, we only fill the jar up about halfway. Way out, as you saw, 130 grams of seeds there is what we find for our standard, a um, little bit larger than the standard 10 to 20 flats. And uh, then we swirl them around a little bit, and then we typically stick a... Um, little bit of paper towel in the top just to make sure the ones right on the surface also stay moist because the floating ones on the surface like to dry out. So those actually get put in the germination shelf and sit for a day. After that day is over, they come out like this. You can see the water is tinted a little bit of a different color. That's These are actually black oil sunflower seeds and that's some of the uh, sunflower oil leaking out. So we're going to pull out our uh, <laughs> Our little paper towel here likes to stick to the seeds, so I try and get as many of those off, but not a big deal. Stick that off to the side. You see we got some guys that are still floating, but most of them have soaked up the water and are sitting at the bottom. They recommend around 12 hours of soaking for these guys. We found that 18 hours is about good for us. I'm not sure if that's about the seed variety, but we adjust it based off of each seed batch that we get. So you might have a little adjusting for that 12 hour to 18 hour mark for your own sunflower seeds or whatever other seeds that you soak. So to get ready for uh, planting we're actually going to go ahead and prep our flats next. So here you can see two of our flats um, we get through Paper Pot Co. Um, they make a great microgreens flat. It's a little bit wider than the 10 inch. I think it's about 11 and a half inches and a little bit longer than the 20 inch. It's about 24, 23 inches long. So about a foot by two feet and only an inch deep, whereas most of the standard 10-20 flats are two inches deep. So next we're gonna get some soil. 
All of our soil comes from Rust Belt Riders composting services. They run Tilth brand soil. You can see it's a really fantastic fluffy mixture. So this is actually 50% their sprout mixture, which is highly nutrient added with uh, kelp meal, bone meal, blood meal, all organic and all natural stuff. And then we actually mix that 50-50 with organic sphagnum peat moss in order to get a better pH for a lot of the younger seeds. Um, so we found that that provides a better germination rate when you do about 50% peat and 50% good potting soil or a high nutritious soil. So we're going to get one and a third liters we found is the best to keep it full for each of our flats. That goes on and then get spread out evenly. Now you want to make sure you press down the corners because the fabric will prevent those from wanting to get filled in easily. So you want to make sure you get this pushed all the way to the edge. If you find any clumps, I just like to break them up. If you find any sticks, I just pull them out. We do uh, actually sieve all of our soil through a quarter inch screen and that helps prevent a lot of the extra clumps and sticks that we have uh, to pull out. Saves us a little time there. So I go through then and do a little bit of extra step where I kind of find any low spots or high spots and spread them out by hand, making sure that they're actually getting pressed down in there. And then I also go around with my hand and actually just do about two to three passes, just kind of tamping it down. After we have that tamped down all over, then we actually have our finishing board here. So this we had cut out and put a handle on, just a simple piece of plywood, cut to the exact size of the inside. I think we left like a millimeter or two millimeters on every edge to allow it to slip in past the fabric. But that fits right in at the edge there. And then we go through and pound that down again. Now because it's over the whole surface, the extra pounding, even though it can be a little bit tougher and sometimes we use a little rubber mallet to do so if your hands are hurting, that actually won't compact the soil down too much because it's spread over the whole surface. The main thing it does is you'll see it provides you with a nice flat, really beautiful surface to work with and that allows your seeds to have the best possible start because they have the most surface area touching. So then we're gonna get this misted and we'll get the seeds on right after that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our flat uh, misted and ready for seeds now. So we always mist it before we sow our seeds into it. Um, and the reason we do that is it actually firms up the surface of the soil and allows you to not have to use any kind of those precision pre-gridded cedar uh, kits they make. You can just get them in a jar and tamp them out, spread them out yourself. And when you're tamping them out, the fall with a uh, good misted surface allows it to bounce and spread out naturally rather than having to do a lot more extra work coming back in and spreading them out by hand. So when you go to mist your flat, I typically start kind of far away because it's pretty dry soil. It'll blow a few things around and then after a while you can get closer. So you start getting that sheen of water on the top you see. That's how you know you're getting enough. But the one thing I'll be able to show you as you can see, the whole surface is really wet now. We even have water pooling towards the middle. It's a good flat uh, surface on it because of that board that we tamped in. So we only have a few high spots, a few low spots. But the fun thing to see here, so I'll pull up the edge and you can see, even after the water is soaked in, it's barely soaked down in. Most of that soil is still dry. The actual misted surface is only you know a sixteenth of an inch deep. So that isn't providing a lot of moisture for your seeds long term. It's really just about firming up the surface of your flat so when you spread seeds, they spread as evenly as possible and bounce the most when they drop onto the flat. So I'll give it a little bit of extra here and then we'll be ready for our sunflower seeds. Now that our flat is misted, the surface of the soil has soaked up the little bit of water we added and that has tightened up, we can now spread our seeds. So typically for the lighter seeds like brassicas, amaranth, or basil, we just have these in a pre-weighed jar. Actually we use this little guy right here. Weigh them out down accurate to the tenth of a gram typically on our nice precision scale. And then that just gets a simple finger tap in order to go uh, all around the flat and distribute those seeds. For when you're soaking seeds, after you have drained the water, which I do typically by just covering with a few fingers, turning it upside down, that allows the water to leak out but keeps the seeds in there. Other ways you can do it is um, with 
uh, piece of chicken wire over the end that way you don't have to have your hand in the water stream. The sunflower water does smell a little odd after a day of soaking, but it is nothing to be worried about. So this is how we actually do after they're drained. We're just gonna go ahead and simply shake back and forth and spread them around the flat. You can see it's not the most even thing in the world. And one thing you'll also notice is a good number of sunflowers like to stick on the inside of your jar. So I always give that one or two good runs at the end and that clears it out pretty well. For the sunflowers here, we can just by hand take the areas that we uh, have too many, pick them up and spread them out. And you can either actually do a full pinch and sprinkle like that, or you can just take them and spread them out by hand. One thing you want to make sure is you don't push all of them away and leave a dead spot or pull up the soil there. So you can see how that happens. So we're going to bring those back and cover that up. And we're just basically going to go around the whole flat and make it even as possible so that the seeds, as much as you can, it's not going to be perfect, aren't touching each other. They each have their own little space. And they are uh, basically evenly covering the entire surface area of your whole flat. And you see, I also do a bit of a, a tamp down, not just uh, a rub, just kind of like a, a pat almost. That helps get a little more soil contact. And then any ones that are piled up on top, if they can't get pressed down into the soil, then they can typically easily roll over onto the next open patch when you come back over it. So you can see there are a decent bit that are still piled up in some places and some empty patches. So. I like to go through, and this is the part where they say microgreens is kind of like an art form. You want to really have the seeding density very even, and the actual, that weight that we got for 130 grams of dry seed for sunflower is going to be different for every single seed, and for most of the size flats or the soil that you have. So you're going to have to adjust that specific gram weight for each of your types of microgreens, as well as depending on your actual seasonality, if you're growing outside, how much heat, how much water you're always giving them. So we do this indoors all year round. So we regulate the climate, we regulate the humidity, the temperature, um, and we have an automatic watering system where we also come back and hand water to supplement and keep it extremely even watering throughout their entire growing process. So we have a bit of a labor intensive process as you'll see that also extends to our harvesting, which we'll see in a bit here for a big sunflower harvest we have going which is why we are uh, out here towards the edge of the warehouse to do this planting today. Typically this is all done in our workstation. So after we have that done, we take another flat here and we actually put that on top of the current one. We make sure that all of our uh, fabric is flattened out and this will keep the humidity up for the flat underneath it. The other thing that it does is the microgreens, as they grow up, they'll hit the bottom of this and they're expecting to be growing under the ground or they have to push through some soil and then eventually they'll pop their head out the surface of the soil and then they're able to actually grow as a plant. So they're expecting that. So what we do is we provide some weight on the top by stacking three or four flats on top of each other and then the top one always gets one or two of uh, another flat placed directly above it so that when the seeds grow up, even though they're right on the surface, they'll hit the bottom of this as if they were hitting the surface under the soil. And they'll have to push on this, allowing their root to have something to push against to dig down into the soil. If you don't have that weight on top, you'll typically see your seeds standing on little legs of roots, and then they'll fall over and flop, and then you have your microgreens growing sideways, and they have to find their way up later. If you provide the weight on top and that resistance, then they'll be able to get started a lot better and grow vertically in a nice straight rows. So here at Lettuce Tree Farms Microgreens, our main focus is to be as sustainable as possible. Make sure that we have the highest quality harvesting, production, and management systems possible so we keep everything clean and safe for all of the customers from uh, CSAs and restaurants to individuals and grocery stores and we want to hear back from you guys so any questions or comments please leave those uh, down below and uh, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram and Facebook I like to respond directly to Facebook messages as well as Instagram DMs um, please follow along for our updates as we're building out our new shipping container farms where all of this will get moved into in the future 
and uh, please tune back in anytime you can to learn more about Lettuce Tree Farms and the great urban farming work we're doing here in Cleveland. Anyway, I'm Jeff Daly with Lettuce Tree Farms. Stay well.